Captain Quack program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, Elvie Allman, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. Fibber and Molly, join us in a moment. When you buy a self-polishing floor wax, remember this. You get better protection, longer wear, easier cleaning with the self-polishing floor wax that is now positively water repellent. That's Johnson's Glow Coat. You get more for your money, too. Glow Coat is now positively water repellent. And because it's water repellent, it lasts up to four times longer. So tomorrow, get the floor wax that gives you superb protection with less work. It's the most economical floor wax you can buy. Get Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat. Hundred and forty thousand men and women started work last week on Operation Nose Count, the 1950 census. 139,999 of these people are intelligent, courteous, and considerate. <laughs> Here's the other one. <laughs> census enumerator McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. I got a feeling I'm going to love this job, Molly. Imagine getting paid good money just for asking personal questions. Boy, oh boy, will I get nosy. And boy, you're just the boy who can do it, too. You betcha. This time, I got the government back of me. Fibber McGee, government official. Let me run through the procedure here before I start out again a minute. First of all, I ring the doorbell, see? When somebody answers, I say, good morning, madam. What if a man answers? Hang up. What? Oh. <laughs> what do you mean if a man answers the door? Well, in that case, I simply say, good morning, bud. I say, I represent the United States censor for this block. No, no, dearie, not the censor, the census. Yeah, what's the difference? Well, the census asks uh, people what they do. Yeah. And the censor says they mustn't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought better of that. Well, anyhow, <laughs> this is going to be quite an experience. Let me see now. I got my book of instructions, the enumerator's reference manual, my fountain pen, a blank form. Heavenly day. Yeah. Is that the questionnaire you fill out? Yeah. Look at the size of that thing. Mm -hmm. Looks like Barnum and Bailey's main pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to have a circus with it, too. Oh, you. <laughs> I may switch the questions around a little, of course, when I get the hang of it. Liable to sound pretty dull asking the same questions all day long. Oh, no, you can handle it, dearie. You've had experience. Asking questions? Sounding dull. Oh. <laughs> Say, you know, Uncle Dennis would be wonderful at, at this job. Yeah? He? he starts every day of his life with the same question. Yeah? What's his question? Where am I? <laughs> you know, that's about the only question they don't have on these blanks here. Oh, they got it. They got that one right here. Really? What? Really? Question 15. What were you doing last week? Working, keeping house, or something else? <laughs> Well, what else is there? Heavenly days, a busy house. Now, look, Tootsie, don't you start giving me trouble before I even ring my first doorbell. Well, come on, let's get started. I want to gather up those vital statistics. You mean vital, dear? No, no, vital. I'm going to ask them what they had for lunch. <laughs> and if there's any left. Because by the time I ring a few doorbells, I'll be hungry enough to eat it. Hold it, G-Man. Company. Now, don't let anybody delay us, whoever it is. Hand me them questionnaires and stuff so it looks like we're leaving. All right. Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Come in. Hello there, daughter. Hi. Oh, put that racing form away, Johnny. Huh? Save your rent money, son. You can't beat the ponies. No, no, no. This is not a race. Oh, don't let the boy gamble, daughter. Bad for his character. Ah. Uh... I mean, Papa used to bet the horses when I was just a kid. Ruined his life completely. Well, that's... Yeah, Papa hung around the stable so much, he developed a hamstrung fetlock. <laughs> A bad case of heaves. Yeah? <laughs> Took to having your shoes custom made at the blacksmith shop. And I can hear him now, grinning as he galloped up the front steps. <laughs> with six furlongs to the drugstore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, that's all very fascinating, but I got work to do. We got to go. Well, I don't want to hold you up, kid. 
Take a lesson, though, from Papa. Yeah? He got a tip from a jockey friend, mortgaged Mama's sewing machine, and bet every dime we had on a horse named Glue Boy. Oh, Glue Boy. <laughs> Sounds like a sticky proposition. Yep. <laughs> glue Boy put everything he had into that run, kids. And he was the first to cross the finish line in the last race of the day. Good. Papa lost everything. Lost? You said the horse came in first in the last race. Yep, but he started out in the first race. <laughs> You ever trust a horse, Johnny? He'll make a jackass out of you every time. Well, I'm sure there must be a fine moral in there somewhere, Mr. Oldtimer, but these papers have nothing to do with racing forms. They're questionnaires. Yep, I've just been appointed censor takers for this district. Censor taker, dearie. Yeah, censor takers. <laughs> Is that so? Yep. We've been waiting long enough for people to come to their census. Now we're going to take the census to the people. <laughs> Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it, one feller says to tell the feller, when he heard McGee was taking the census, say, he says, why is the wistful vista census like a ride on a rocket ship? Triple, says to the feller, because they both start off with a big jerk. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra, and if I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. and said, come back tomorrow. And the place with the measles sign on the door, I got so far, just one. Well, here we go again. Good morning, sir. I'm the U.S. Censor Taker. Censor Taker? Yeah, Censor Taker. Oh, hi, Ollie. Yeah, hello, McGee. Hello, missus. 
You were what kind of a toker? <laughs> the United States Census, Ollie. The government needs a lot of information about population and housing. Oh, sure. I, I've been waiting for that. Go ahead, Census Toker. Ask questions. Well, your name we have, Ollie, and the address. Born? Well, sure. Not lately, though. What's the wrong thing? Who's the head of this household? Wait till I close the door. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Where were you born, Oli? Uh, Davenport. Iowa? No, Stockholm. <laughs> Mama didn't have time to get the hospital I was born on Davenport. <laughs> How many people live at this address? Well, if you call it living. <laughs> That's me and my missus and the kids. Christina, Laura, Sven, Lali, Yasmin, and better leave one space for next January. Now then, one more question. Okay. What time is it? About half past. Hmm. Thanks. We better get going. Well, thanks, Ollie. Oh, that's all right, McGee. Nothing is too good for the government. They seem to thank. <laughs> Isn't this fun, McGee? Who's next on the list? I don't know, but I wish it was Edgar Bergen. <laughs> Why? I'd like to ask him if he feels lonesome since McCarthy got to be a senator. <laughs> uh, who lives in that house there, McGee? Uh, a guy named Crabtree. I know him from the Elks Club, but I'm skipping him. Afraid he isn't home? I'm afraid he is home. I owe him ten bucks. <laughs> Let's take this next one. Yeah, it's a beautiful house. Yeah. Must be millionaires. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Good day, b sir. I am the U.S. Censor Taker from this territory. Censor Taker, he means. Uh, Censor Taker. I regret to say, uh, sir and madam, that the master, Mr. Weeks Farthington, is unavailable for interrogation at the moment. If you could return in about a fortnight. Now, uh, range it for a little, Joe. Sir? <laughs> hey, what's going on? As I was about to say, sir, if you could return at a more convenient time. Convenient for who? This is convenient for us, bud. Quite. However, I'm afraid. Now, uh, one more star in the flag, Joe. Here, <laughs> <Yeah>, oh. <laughs> Now, what on earth is going on in there, sir? Oh. Mr. Wilkes Farthington is being tattooed, madam. <laughs> Come back at a more convenient time, he says. Getting paid by the name and make a dozen trips. That's the kind of stuff that gets under my skin. Well, judging from the elves, they were getting under Mr. Wilkes Farthington, too. <laughs> Try this place, sweetheart. Okay. Good day, madam. We're taking the United States Census, sis. Oh, I wish I had time to talk to you, but my housework keeps me so busy. Yeah? I'm expecting the Mr. Wilcox to come and show me how I can simplify it. Well, now, he's just the lad that can do it, too. Because when he shows you how Johnson's water repellent glow coat can save you so much time and work, ah, you'll simply be amazed. <laughs> you betcha. Now then, sis, my first question is about... Johnson's water repellent glow coat? Yes. No. My question is you about... You see, madam... I'm a housewife myself, and I know what glow coat will do. <laughs> you know those dingy, milky-looking streaks on the linoleum? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a thing of the past. That's a thing of the past. Because water-repellent glow coat stays on and stays bright, even after repeated damp mopping. Uh, what's the name, sis? Johnson's. Johnson's water-repellent glow coat. <laughs> no, I meant what's the lady... Quiet, dearie. Mm. The lady and I are talking. I see. You see, lady, glow coat is very easy to apply. You just pour a little out, spread it around, and let it dry, and in 20 minutes or less, here comes Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell you the rest of it. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Hello Mrs. Hello. Curry. Hello. Say, I'm sorry to be late, but the census taker was at my house. Look, I... Junior, I'm taking the census. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This will only take a minute, pal. I want to tell Mrs. Curry oh, about... Oh, John... this lady has already told me, Mr. Wilcox. Hmm? It seems that glow coat will cut my housework in half. So bring me two cans right away, because that will take care of all my housework, and now I have the rest of the day to talk to you nice people. So come in and sit down. Uh, good day, Mr. Wilcox. Well, this is a fine thing. 
I'm going downtown and look up the law on horse thieving. Somebody stole my plug. <laughs> Hi, bud. How do you do? Uh, I'm the census taker, bud. This is my wife, Molly. How do you do, I'm sure. Well, how are you, Mrs. Taker? Won't you come in? <laughs> bud. But uh, it isn't Mrs. Taker. It's Mrs. McGee. I'm McGee. I'm taking the census. Really? Well, that's peculiar. I had a letter from one of my cousins in Idaho, and she claims she's taking the census. <laughs> oh, you got cousins in Idaho? Boise? No, they're all girlsy. <laughs> a new pencil, McGee. You better get busy now. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you understand, bud, that this is the regular annual 10-year census. All information gave here, too, is strictly confidential and non-revealable to any other government department or bureau. That understood? Uh, by whom? <laughs> Not by us, but that's what it says. Go ahead, boys. Okay, bud. Now, uh, how about a few questions? Good. I love this. Huh? First question. No. Can you quote... <laughs> Now, listen quietly now. Can you quote Napoleon's farewell to his men after the Battle of Waterloo in three words? We're supposed to ask the question. I'm sorry. That's six words and you lose. <laughs> the correct quotation is, so long, fellas. <laughs> now, my next question... Hey, 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 hey. Please, now, we ask the question. Yeah. Now then, bud. Your name, please. Baker. Your occupation? No, that's my name. <laughs> Baker, Axelrod P. Baker. Well, uh, what is your, ac your occupation, Baker? Butcher. Mm. My father, my father, Chauncey Baker, was also a butcher. Uh -huh. All of us bakers are butchers. <laughs> Except on my mother's side, she was a carpenter. You mean, sir, that was her maiden name? No, her maiden name was Beastoffel. <laughs> Emily Bainstoffel. Then she married Daddy, who was a butcher named Baker. That made her Mrs. Emily Bainstoffel Baker, Jr. How do you spell that? J-U-N-I-O-R. <laughs> now then, do you want to ask me some questions, Miss Taker? McGee, Baker, not Miss Taker. <laughs> not Miss Taker for whom, sir? McGee. Oh, I'd never mistake you for him, honey. Oh, you're much prettier to be Cy. Now, looky here, Cy. We ain't getting any place. Well, you should have thought of that before you went into this government work. Huh? I realize it's a very safe job. Gives you a certain security. Wait but... a minute now, please, uh, Mr. Butcher. Lady speaking to you, Mr. Butcher. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm not Mr. Butcher. <laughs> McGee. Your name is Butcher. No, my name is Baker. Huh? <laughs> you remember I said my mother, who was a bank stoffel, married my father. Never mind that. That isn't important. It is to me, madam. <laughs> ah, for the love of Mike. No, Chauncey. Mike was my uncle. <laughs> It was for the love of Mike that a girl named Marjorie Pinkett. Stop it, please. Now, look, Buster, how much money did you make last year? Two million five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> but I had to burn it. You had to burn it? Yeah, I forgot to put a beard on Lincoln. <laughs> you see, I had a little engraving plant back in my butcher shop. Oh, come on. Let's go. I'm marking this residence down as vacant. Go on. The King's Man, and have I told you lately that I love you? Have I told you lately that I love you? Could I tell you once again somehow? Have I told with all my heart and soul how I adore you? Well, darling, I'm telling you now This heart would break in two if you should leave me I'm no good without you anyhow Dear, have I told you lately that I love you? Well, darling, I'm telling you now Dear, have I told you lately how I've missed you? When 
When the stars are shining in the sky Have I told you why the nights are long when you're not with me? Well, darling, I'm telling you now Have I told you lately when I'm sleeping Every dream I dream is you somehow Have I told with whom I'd like to share my love forever? Well, darling, I'm telling you now Well, darling, I'm telling you Theory and we can go home. How many people did we call on today? Well, uh, according to my list, we knocked on 62 doors, kiddo. A good day's work. Yep, 62 houses. And the people were at home in all but 48 of them. <laughs> that leaves 14. Right, not only that, but nine out of the 14 answered my questions. Three of them without even beeping. Not a bad day's work for my first day as a censor take us. It's census takers. Right, censor take us. When I get going tomorrow... Oh, oh, look, kiddo, look who's coming across the street. Doc Gamble. Oh, boy, oh, boy, have I, have I been waiting for this. Oh, that is the doctor, is sure. it? I recognize the walk. You said it. <laughs> look at him. He walks like a chapped duck. <laughs> hey, Fatso. Hello there, Molly. Nice to see you. Thank you, doctor. Hello, Wardhead. Hi. What's the briefcase in the Lear for? You peddling Mississippi bubble stock? Or is that thing full of snake oil in case you run across a rusty snake? <laughs> ah, you'll find out. You might be happy to know, Doctor, that I have just been appointed census taker for this district. It's censor taker. Are you? <laughs> what? Oh, no. Yep. You're looking at a duly qualified minor official, Buster. <laughs> Prepare to have your census took. Now, look, look, will you catch me later? I, I, I've got calls to make. People <laughs> sick, maybe. It uh, might be an operation. Look at him squirm, kiddo. Look at him. Maybe I ought to read you the law about answering questions, Doctor. Yeah. On page 98, section 9, it says any person... All who... right, all right, you got me, you double-crossing little snoop. Go on, ask me. Oh, now, Doctor, that's no way to act. Well... Why does he have to be the one? You know, Doctor, uh, that any information you give him is confidential. You know that, don't Certainly you? Certainly it is. And besides, it'll make a swell chapter for the book I'm writing about you, Doctor. <laughs> it's called Inside Dr. Gamble, or Baby, It's Dark in Here. Get on with the questions. Okay, name and address. All right, now let's see what we got. Now, how much money did you make last year? $12,000. 12000 honestly? Part of it, kiddo, part of it. <laughs> Say about $3 of it, honestly. Hey, Fatso? Get on with the questions, Nosey. Okay, next question. Are those your own teeth, Doctor? Certainly, I have the receipt for them. <laughs> yes, they are. Boy, this is wonderful. Next question. Is it true that you were holding hands with the Miss Fifi Tremaine in the balcony of the Bijou Theater last night and the usher had McGee. to come... Okay. <laughs> have, have you ever been married, Doctor? No. Are you thinking of getting married? Yes, I'm secretly engaged. Yeah? Whom to? Miss Tremaine. Oh. Heavenly days, Doctor. We didn't know that. Miss Tremaine, huh? Boy, oh, boy. Is that something for the gang at the Elks? <laughs> well, it's sure nice of you to give me all this dope about your private life, Doctor. And I got news for you. Yes? <laughs> yeah. You ain't in my census district. <laughs> There'll be a guy around to take your census next week. What? <laughs> Thanks, pigeon. You're welcome, Chisler. And I have news for you, too. What is it, Doctor? I know I'm not in his district. That's why I gave them all wrong answers. So long. <laughs> what? Why, that double crosser. Hmm. Taking advantage of my faith in him to deliberately lie to me and... <laughs> oh, my, it's good to be home. This has been quite a day. What are you reading? I'm oh, just checking through my reference manual to see if I've done anything right. <laughs> hey, page 18, now, let me see. Not to be accompanied or assisted by unauthorized persons. Not permit anyone to accompany you except duly authorized... Oh, my gosh! 
Hand me the phone, quick. Then run up and pack our bags. Here's the phone, but what on earth is that? Oh, I can't talk now, kiddo. We're in a jam. I just... Hello, operator. Give me the airport. Hello, airport. Two reservations to South America on the midnight plane. What time does it leave? Oh, midnight. Steve, <laughs> what are you doing? What say, sis? The names? Oh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Jones and wife, Molly. Okay. <laughs> We'll be there. McGee, please, what are you talking about? What is this? We're in trouble, baby. That's what this is. Look at this census manual. By letting you go with me and read this confidential stuff, I'm liable to a thousand buck fine and two years in the pokey. What? Now get your hat and make some jelly sandwiches. I'll mail in my resignation when we get to Hong Kong. Fibber and Molly return in a moment. Ladies, if I could save you hours of hard work every week, I'll bet you'd be glad to let me, wouldn't you? Well, then, let me tell you how to eliminate at least half the hard work of keeping your kitchen floors bright and beautiful. Tomorrow, first thing, give them a good coat of Johnson's Glow. You'll find out for yourself how much hard work that saves you. There'll be no polishing, you know. Glow coat polishes itself as it dries. No hard scrubbing either, because dirt, dust, and grime just whisk right off that hard, shining surface. And that beautiful glow coat luster isn't spoiled the first time someone tracks in mud or drips or spills water on it. For glow coat is now positively water repellent. You can even damp mop a glow coat protected floor repeatedly without killing its shine. And here is perhaps the best news of all. Because it's positively water repellent, glow coat now lasts up to four times longer. Now, that not only means more for your money in every drop, but less work as well, because you have to do your floors so much less often. So tomorrow, start using the floor wax that saves floors, saves work, saves money. Get Johnson's water-repellent glow coat. Gentlemen, the 1950 census is underway. When the census taker calls on you, ask to see his card, invite him in, and answer his questions accurately. A true picture of the size and condition of our country depends on true answers from all of us. And a true picture is of vital importance. Remember that the information you give your census taker is completely confidential. By law, no other agency of government can ever use it for tax 